Hello and welcome to the Elite Sports Precinct. This is a high quality outdoor sporting facility that we can use for a variety of great practical experiences for you when you study exercise and sports science with us. So I'm standing on an IAAF standard athletics track and in the middle of the track is a FIFA standard synthetic soccer pitch. We also have an MCG size football oval and other outdoor sporting facilities and equipment in this precinct. Um, we also have a great indoor teaching space that we use that's right next to the running track. And this is a place where we can sit with you and we can talk with you about theory and plans for a practical class and present multimedia content to you co-located with this fantastic outdoor facility. So as an example of the use of our running track and the technology that we have uh, for sports science practical teaching, uh, one of our former graduates, Reese, is gonna conduct a sprint test, but it's no basic sprint test. We're gonna use light gates to give us millisecond precision timing for this test, and we're also timing Reese's ability to accelerate over those crucial first five meters of a maximal intensity sprint. So let's see how he goes. Ready, set, go. We're now in our strength and conditioning lab um, where our students get exclusive access to this space. So it's set up just like a normal commercial gym, but no members of the public can access this. It's exclusively uh, for our teaching purposes. So one thing that sets apart the learning experience for our students as future exercise scientists and strength and conditioning coaches is the use and the exposure of, um, of different training methodology and techniques. And one of those techniques is the use of technology. So we've got one piece of technology to demonstrate for you today. So this unit on the floor here that you can see is attached up to the barbell. This is called a gym aware unit and this actually detects um, velocity or power that's generated during an exercise. So during this um, demonstration Reese is going to perform three repetitions of a bench press as fast as he can and this unit's actually going to capture how much power he's producing for every single repetition. Perfect. So what we can use this data for is we can actually capture how much power Reese produced um, at that particular weight. And then we would do subsequent sets. We would add on extra weight and see how much, um, how Reese's power profile changed. So we would expect it to increase before then decreasing when the weight became too heavy to move as fast as he was just doing then. And that's how we can pinpoint what training intensity would be ideal for the development of power. Welcome to our strength conditioning classroom. Uh, I call this a classroom because it is a dedicated teaching space. It's really a, a fully functioning gym, but it's not something that's open to the public or even most of the student body, so that you don't have to share this space with other students. This is a dedicated teaching space for you. So one of the big differences between the personal trainer and what we do here is in the equipment use. And one thing that I wanted to show you was how we do a test called the dynamic strength index. So that's going to start with a maximal pull against a bar that's not going to move. The next thing that we'll do is a maximal jump, and that's going to assess how much force he, she generates at a 100% velocity, as fast as she can move. What the dynamic strength index is going to tell us is if she's too weak for her speed or too slow for her strength. So welcome to the exercise uh, physiology lab. Um, so exercise physiology is where we study uh, the various body's systems, so including the respiratory system, the cardiovascular system, and the skeletal muscle system. And we look at how they respond to exercise in order to supply the body with sufficient oxygen um, in order to meet the physical demands of exercise. So the metabolic core is a, is a key piece of equipment um, in exercise physiology because it allows us to measure how much oxygen is being delivered and used by the working muscle at any point during exercise. And from that, we can also run um, a maximal exercise test to work out what the maximal rate of oxygen consumption um, is for a particular athlete, and that's what we call the VO2 max. So we can look at the, the readout from the metabolic core on this screen, and the top two lines are looking at the percentage of oxygen and percentage of carbon dioxide 
that is contained within the expired air, so that's the air that is breathed out um, during exercise. And from that, we can work out how much oxygen is being used, and we can also work out information about what fuels are being used during exercise. And then on the, the lower part of this screen, on the bottom line, is um, we have a, a readout of heart rate in real time, and that means we can integrate recordings of both um, the oxygen utilization during exercise, so the metabolic cost of the exercise, but also the cardiovascular demand um, of that exercise. So in this lab, our students get a lot of hands-on experience um, in learning how to apply these skills in practice. Um, and each student that runs through the exercise physiology laboratories will take a practical exam to demonstrate the learning of the key skills required um, in exercise physiology. So one of the key bits of equipment that we have in, in this lab is the, in the environmental chamber. Um, so this is a really nice piece of equipment that allows us to mimic environmental conditions that athletes might experience during competition or training. So the environmental chamber can change the humidity, can change the heat, and also the oxygen concentrations to mimic um, exercise at altitude. Okay, so we're now in the biomechanics room. So biomechanics is the study of human movement. Specifically, we look at the forces that the body can generate, as well as things such as speed and acceleration. To do that, we use a lot of different equipment in here. Um, so one example of that is our motion capture camera system as you can see over my shoulder. Uh, that's the same sort of technology that Pixar uses to do animations. We're using that to measure joint angles to a very millimetre degree. Another piece of equipment which we use is called the force plate. The force plate is embedded in the ground, and what that does is measures ground reaction force. We can use that as a tool to also measure one's balance. So we can do a multi-stage uh, balance test, which starts off with two feet planted on the ground, we will then move on to a test where one foot is planted on the ground. And finally, the same one foot planted on the ground. However, we will get the participant to close their eyes. This removes all the visual cues to participant. And now the person is only relying on their body's proprioception. So their feeling, their sense of where their body is in space to balance themselves. This applies to a variety of different uh, real life applications whether that be with elderly people who may be suffering from a neuro neurological disease which affects their balance, or it could affect, to affect elite athletes. So for instance, basketball and netball players, if they are jumping for the ball and not necessarily paying attention to where they're landing and they land with a single leg, they're much more prone risk to an ACL rupture. Okay, welcome to the Biomechanics Laboratory. Uh, we're set up today to show you our 3D motion analysis uh, system. Uh, it's a state-of-the-art gold standard method of looking at an athlete's uh, technique uh, from, from a performance perspective and also an injury prevention uh, perspective. So we've got Charlie with us here today. He, he's going to perform a uh, jump shot just to show you what it looks like. So when he's moving, what you can see on here, you can see some red arrows come up and they're our force vectors. So when we combine those two types of measurement techniques, we've got our force platforms and our motion capture system, we can measure the reaction forces that are going through his joints. So for example, his ankle reaction forces and his knee reaction forces. Um, so this type of technology that I've just shown you, this is also being used at uh, the Australian Institute of Sport. They also have similar systems, not exactly the same here, at places such as Nike and also, of course, in Hollywood, where they're trying to produce uh, simulations for movies and also for video games. We're now in the 3D Gate Lab. So 3D Gate is an international company which has a very large database of normative gate values. When we talk about gate, we're looking at a person's running and walking technique. So we have a lot of specialised equipment in here. First of which is our 3D motion capture system. This is the same as our biomechanics room, but it's also the same system that Pixar uses for their animations. We're just using it here to measure joint angles down to the millimeter. We also have our Burtek treadmill here. This isn't the standard treadmill. For one, it has two individual belts which move at the same speed, but more importantly, underneath each belt, there's a force plate, the same sort of technology that we saw in our biomechanics room. 
However, this is being used for a much more specialized purpose. This is a very unique treadmill, uh, one of only a few in Australia. So you can see our treadmill and motion capture, capture system working together right now uh, to track our participant on the treadmill. Uh, you can see it moving in real time on the screen. So we use this data to assess a person's gait and then also prescribe exercises and programs for them to improve their running technique, whether that's a person coming back from injury or an athlete trying to become more efficient in their running pattern. Welcome to the motor learning space. You can expect to use this in your second year. Motor learning or skill acquisition as it's commonly known encompasses things from motor control where we look at how we control our movements right through into the applied practical setting for sport team performance where we examine how to best design training structures. One of the activities that we can do in this space is examine the decision making of our athletes. We have Matt here to demonstrate this for us. He has to make the best decision and pass to the athlete who he thinks is the best option. One way that we assess how automated an athlete's skill is, is we make this a dual task activity. So we're going to get Matt to count down from 100 in threes as he completes this task. 97, 94, 91. So these are the types of things you could expect to be doing in this particular space. So this is the Deakin Clinical Exercise Centre, which is the hub of the Masters in Clinical Exercise Physiology at Deakin University. Nearly all our classes uh, occur in this wonderfully equipped uh, modern facility. What we're doing here, what you're seeing here, is a, a sign, symptom and fatigue limited incremental exercise test. We're obviously practicing here on a student today, but we would have clients in here who have significant cardiac disease or lung disease or both. And we're teaching our students how to provide safe and effective exercise services using in this instance a sign, symptom and fatigue limited incremental exercise test. What we're measuring here is blood pressure, heart rate and rhythm, uh, using an ECG, oxygen saturation and obviously their exercise intensity.